little update. And we, the other counties actually hear about it and ask to come as well. So we had a number of Morris County administrators here. We have probably about 200, 250 people in the pack today. Um, and Dylan, our new pack manager, did an outstanding job. Uh, it ran extremely smoothly. And actually the speaker brought uh, a couple of uh, members of a crew because he wanted to record some of it for his own use and so Dylan works seamlessly with them so I just I really want to commend him because he's rolled right into the, the role and done a really nice job um, and it was nice to, to see colleagues in person so many of our events are virtual now but it was actually really, really nice to host everyone here uh, and the other uh, piece that's been nice about the last couple of weeks is the school is buzzing um, between the camps we have going on that our coaches are running uh, we have our ESY going on, we have our power credit recovery program occurring, so uh, there's a lot going on in the building and our, our summer work is underway. We have minimal construction work this summer, most of our big projects will be uh, next year and next summer, but there's a lot of activity in the building and uh, it's, just, it's nice to see that back to normal after you know some years where it's a little bit different. So we've had quite an active summer and it's nice to see everyone. Thank you. Great, thank you Dr. Jewett. Uh, the only I have some brief comments uh, this evening, and it's uh, related to the just concluded legislative session. Um, uh, we're becoming increasingly concerned about the encroachment of both legislative and gubernatorial edicts uh, that are encroaching upon the authority of uh, boards of education and school administrations. Uh, some of the most recent ones that have come into play uh, include legislation that was passed regarding uh, the use of uh, sick leave uh, that was opposed by every single one of the education associations uh, in the state with the exception of the NJEA, um, which basically takes something that has been in uh, the realm of uh, negotiations and takes it out of negotiations and, and put it into uh, statute based on the legislation. Uh, that's just one example of several uh, pieces of legislation that are coming forward that are encroaching on uh, what is rightfully the responsibility of the Board of Education in the state to determine what is appropriate uh, within their districts. And over the next several months, uh, they'll begin to hear and see more and more action from uh, individual boards and school boards associations to begin to address uh, this encroachment um, so that uh, the idea of local authority and local governance and local control remains local control uh, and that we don't end up in a situation where we have uh, folks well outside of our community trying to impose things that may not be in the best interest of our community. So um, there will be more on that um, in future meetings as they come up. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Simons. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if I can draw the board's attention to item number D12. Thanks to the negotiating efforts of Ms. Phelan and Mr. Sabino, that number changes from 21,000 to 15,500. Okay. 15,500. So that's a change on the agenda. And then the other thing, just because Liz mentioned it, we, with construction, we the bid opening, uh, is, the first bid opening is going to be on mid-August, actually it's right around the time of the board meeting. Uh, so that's going to be the uh, large project. If things go well, the first thing we would do, the first thing we would work on is the, uh, the nurses, not nurses, uh, the nurses. Okay. Uh, Thank you. So that, that we can do during the school year. We can kind of close that one off. Uh, the other projects would be probably early or late spring into the summer. Uh, and we're looking to do the work in the spring and finish it prior to the next, the start of the next year, rather than start in the summer and go into October. That would be an easier transition. Uh, so anyway, so that's kind of where we are at the construction. The funding is all in place. As a matter of fact, we've already paid off our loan. We got our debt service aid, our state aid. So all, that all went pretty well. Uh, we're just going to be working. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Sines. This is the first opportunity for public comment, public period, and will be limited to agenda items for this meeting only. The second public comment period will be open to any topic. All comments are limited to five minutes. 
first opportunity for public comment. Seeing none, we'll move to board discussion. Any board discussion items? Seeing none, we'll move on to any discussion of addendum items. Seeing none, we will then move into the action items. Opportunity for public comments. Please. Please state your name and town of residence. Good evening, Mayor Livonia, Long Hill Township. Usually I speak regarding teachers' contract, and I sure hope that the situation is changing for better and all our amazing teachers will start the next year with the new contract. And tonight I want to make a few remarks about the book discussion that we had last time. I grew up in Armenia, where it was a part of Soviet Union, and we didn't have access to many books and other sources of information. We were lied to about many historical facts as well. For instance, we were taught that during World War II, the United States played almost no role in the Soviet Union if it did the Nazi basically alone. I learned the truth about World War II only after I moved here. 23 years ago, I was sitting on my couch in New Providence watching the History Channel. It was a documentary about Normandy. Even though I didn't speak English much, I understood that they were implying that America had a big role in the victory. I remember how I jumped off my couch and started yelling at the TV and calling it a lie. I will never forget that. To me, it was such a horrible lie that I couldn't breathe. Fortunately, my survival instinct worked because it took me only a few minutes to stop and start thinking critically. As much as I didn't want to admit it, I understood that the History Channel cannot lie. And it was me who didn't know the truth about World War II and many other things that I learned through the next, throughout the next years living in America. I discovered many facts that the Soviet system was hiding from us, I have to say, that, that that was extremely painful process. So the reason why I'm so sensitive about hiding any information and placing barriers for our children is because I was that child once. When I was growing up, so many books were banned or hard to get. So many things were not taught or hushed up. And that's why when the board disapproves of these two books, On Home, which is about a lesbian girl who tells her story an almost American girl that on top of being a graphic novel is about an Asian immigrant girl. Both are very unpleasant topic for some people on the board. So that's why it brings back the memories that I have. It doesn't matter what we call it when we take a book off a list. The fact that the board can exclude a book based on some members' religious beliefs, political views, and the difference from their generation's interest is unacceptable. I still don't understand how the board could remove the book, especially after they heard a detailed explanation of Mr. Mr. Aquavia. I don't understand on what ground the board doesn't trust our teachers. By taking a book off the required reading list, you just decrease the spread of the valuable information. 
that, is con uh, that, it, that it contains because you make it less likely that our students will read it. But I guess that's exactly uh, what some members of the board are aiming for. We may not be banning books yet, but we are moving in the same directions as Florida. Last thing I want to say regarding what Mr. Morrison said at the last meeting, how it's important that we're thoughtful and careful with the words we choose. I think the board members have to be very careful themselves before asking such an accuracy in worse choice from others and not call a graphic novel, a comic book, or a picture book. And Mr. Morrison, if you decide to respond, please keep your emotions out of control. This is not your meeting, like you told me, and you cannot reprimand neither parents nor teachers like you did several times before. Remember that many of our students are watching these meetings, and as you said yourself, we have to be civilized towards each other. Thank you. Other comments? Kathy O'Leary Longhill. Our apologies, good friends, for the fracture of good order, the burning of paper instead of children, the angering of the orderlies in the front parlor of the charnel house. We could not, so help us God, do otherwise, for we are sick at heart. Our hearts give us no rest for thinking of the land of burning children. For those of you not familiar, this is the opening statement of the Catonsville Nine, a group of nine devout Catholics, including two Catholic priests who were moved to action to remove draft cards from the Selective Service Office located in the Knights of Columbus in Catonsville, Maryland, and then burn them in the parking lot while singing hymns and reciting prayers as they waited for the police to arrive and arrest them. The statement was the first thing I thought of as I heard all this discussion by this board of upholding decorum. Thankfully, none of the students in this district are literally on fire from bombing with napalm, but the children of this district have told this board about the psychological and emotional toll of the intolerance and hate that exists and is expressed to them on a regular basis during the school day. I wonder, where is your unrest? at the thought of students not feeling safe in the environment you're responsible for creating and maintaining. I have seen no rush to protect the students who are dealing with racism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism, whether at school or in the communities that make up the sending districts. I am sure many of you saw the pictures of the recent defacing of the Warren Township playground with swastikas and hate speech. Incidents of hate are on the rise in New Jersey. This district is not immune. Even if you wanted to pretend that it was, your students have told you otherwise. What you did rush to protect was, your, was what you referred to as decorum, that amorphous, shifting, and arbitrary term that denotes everything from dress code to body language to word choices and tone of voice. But despite suggestions of the contrary, there is nothing sacred about decorum. You will find that it is not even constitutional. In Mahoning Area School District, the BL, the Supreme Court held in 2021 that a public school violated the First Amendment and it disciplined a student cheerleader for a profane off-campus speech. As an adult who is not employed by the district, I think you will find that my free speech rights are even stronger. I could stand here and drop F-bombs, and that would be considered protected speech. But I would suggest that if you are easily offended by profane speech, or easily frightened by an angry tone, that you tender your resignation immediately, because you are not suited to face the public in a forum such as this. Furthermore, decorum is a social construct that is often wielded by the powerful to silence the voices of marginalized people and to resist opposition and pressure from the people. Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, both assemblymen from Tennessee, would agree. It was the quorum that was used as the reason for their expulsion from the Tennessee House of Representatives because they supported demonstrators who demanded that the legislature act to remove weapons of war from their streets, the very weapons of war that were used two weeks prior to their expulsion in a mass shooting at a Nashville school that took the lives of three children and three adults. 
Reflecting on his expulsion from the Tennessee legislature, Justin Jones said, we see this weaponization of decorum to silence dissent, to silence voices that make people uncomfortable. And that's really what they're doing, is silencing any voice of divergence from their dominant narrative. One could certainly argue that maintaining the dominant narrative is not only what this board is doing by emphasizing decorum, but it is also what it is doing when members complained and initially voted down the summer reading list. After all, one of you mentioned a desire for classics to be added to the list. Classics are most often used to refer to a body of literature by wealthy, white, European men, sometimes including the Greeks, but ignoring completely the long literary traditions of places like China, Japan, and the Indian subcontinent. If you are really steeped in the classics, you might be familiar with St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica, in which he writes, he who is without anger when he has cause to be sins. In other words, it is sinful to be without anger in the face of injustice. In the tradition of the Catholic Church, racism is a grave sin, an affront to human dignity and respect for life. So I ask you, where is your anger that students in your district are being called illegal and being told to go back to their country? You have the power to do something about this. Why aren't you funding and properly staffing ELL? Why are you failing to support the strategic plan when it comes to DEI? When the Catonsville Nine planned their demonstration over 50 years ago, they knew that in the short term they would be denounced for disturbing a violently unjust order. However, history has looked more, much more favorably on their actions. I wonder how history will look on yours. I also wonder which side of history do you want to be on? Thank you. Other public comment? Going once, going twice, please. And please uh, share with us your name and the town of your residence. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Georgiana Tillinghast, and I'm from Washoe, and I just graduated this year. Um, and I was also president of the Belief Club during my time at Washington Hills. I believe that a large population of the school is being ignored today, and it's unacceptable. As a diverse public school, the holidays of Diwali and Eid should be considered just as valuable as those already recognized in the Christian and Jewish communities. A lot of my friends are forced to choose between skipping a day of school or missing out on celebrating out an important holiday and their religion, and it's not right. These holidays should be given, especially seen as we are the last school in the district that hasn't been given them. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? And congratulations on your graduation. Thank you. Seeing none, we will close the second opportunity for public comments. Move on to other business. Any board members with other business? Same one. We'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. We are. We stand adjourned. Thank you.